Hi, welcome to our better YouTube channel. It's cold here in Denver, finally got some snow, and we are working on stage three of this unfucking my car. We got uh, Professor Dave over here who's helping me out with some of the wiring on the turbo, see if we can get that servo working properly, actually move the vanes relative to boost pressure. That's what we're working on today, but right now, Ted's on the engine, fuel pump is in one piece with the 11 millimeter head installed on it. Professor Dave, what are we doing? I'm learning how to do this all again because I've done it in eight years. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the servo we're working with. This is the actuating arm that goes to the turbo, but what we're gonna work on is actually getting this system to rotate. You can see him getting that. But at, when it hits an extrema, like when this twists all the way one way, it's a tendency to stick. So we're gonna see if we can combat that with small pulses as opposed to just hitting the whole thing with 12 volts. But also I feel like it'd be fine as long as it's not fast. Cause again, I was hitting like this okay. with 12 volts as fast, yeah. like as it's quickly as it could, but that's probably still like what? At least like 500 milliseconds or something of power. Like it's a lot. So this would swing through its whole range of motion and immediately bind on like one side or the yeah, other, okay. which at first I was like, what is happening? Yeah, so our ideal end goal for today is to see this go back and forth in a controlled manner. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, industrial servo versus... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that one would probably work, yeah. <laughs> and then... Did you add this piece just now? Yeah. Okay. And then six, eight, seven. So these two will go into that servo. Cool. Thank Instead you. of uh, delaying, we'll put some conditionals, like if pressure equals this, put it at this position. That's sick. You could just you build could. yourself a friggin' PCM. This thing's yeah. like overkill. <laughs> I mean, literally, yeah. <laughs> this thing's like way overkill. What For what we're doing, we could have a chip like that as size. big as your thumbnail. Oh, like. sick. <laughs> Boost to the moon. <laughs> I'm giving this thing 35 PSI to the face. Probably gave it more. I wish the new gauge worked when we did that pass. So here's the turbo, mostly assembled, and in here for a fit check. I think in order to make this a sustaining build, turbo build, in order to fit the actuator here, this, uh, this mounts up right there like so. But it gets really close to this hot side. So I think I'm gonna have to push this back a little, which is unfortunate. I guess worst case, I could cut this shorter if my boot doesn't have room over here, but it's gonna have to be more like so. But I'm stoked because the oil oil hole in this turbo is pretty close to level. Hard to show you guys with the fisheye, but it's barely tilted back, maybe like three degrees. So stoked, and this is gonna be my exhaust manifold pressure reference right on the turbo. So it'll be pretty dialed. I, uh, I'm happy with the angle of everything we got going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and consider this clocked. Okay, if you ever do replace the center cartridge on your turbo yourself, the one thing to keep in mind, I would say, and what is always a safe check if you did it right or not. Um, generally these housings, once you tighten them, they get pretty dang centered and even, but as you're doing it, you should constantly be checking whether or not this is rubbing because you shouldn't get any shaft rub. Or there should be no rubbing of impeller or turbine blades on housings when you're done. So last time around, I had this guy on there, which is a like 1.5 millimeter oil restrictor. And this is a journal bearing turbo, so you really just shouldn't be using an oil restrictor at all. And if you need one, it's probably because your turbo isn't set up right, like mine wasn't. Generally speaking, if your oil feed 
is tilted a bit too much, then it can't drain properly and you get oil issues. This time around though, I'm gonna be using an unrestricted banjo fitting, which is gonna make it more convenient to take on and off and get rid of the weird stack of fittings I had. So we'll put this on there and be in good shape. Sweet, I got the turbo fully built up. Let me show it to you. Linkage is in, not clipped or anything, but it approximately works. We're a little short of fully closed, but I feel like that maybe is desirable given my previous experiences. Got the nameplate on there from Rotomaster. Got my feed line, because it's pretty hard to get to once it's on the car. Oil drain. Yada yada. This too is fresh. I went ahead and cut off the old flange because it was warped if you got if you recall and put on a fresh one so it's a good looking hunk of metal now we have a nice little complex mechanism here I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can uh, hook this up to the Arduino me and Dave got set up the other day and show you guys how this works slash see if it even works we've been testing this system with no load and not on the turbo, but now that it's all connected, I can actually see if it's gonna work. So the idea here is, this is motor controlling code here on my computer that's controlling, well, it's Arduino code going to this Arduino. This Arduino is activating pins on this chip right here, and this chip is feeding the right amount of power based on what the Arduino is telling it to do. Over here, to the turbo and this is connected to this so all I really need to do is turn this on and this big box is really just an easy way to build circuits and provide power that's it nothing fancy definitely not enough sauce over there so I'm gonna go ahead and change that if I can remember how. The servo and chip aren't putting out enough power to actually make this baby go, but just to show you guys that it does go, um, so I show myself, I have it hooked up directly to this proto board and I'm gonna slowly increase voltage so as not to jam it. Just like that. Maxed out at one end. Now if I flip these leads, because that's how this works, you basically flip power and ground to this motor in order to reverse direction. We do the same thing. Let's slowly go the other way. Okay, so it is still sticking a bit. And it just jammed again, which sucks but you get the idea. <laughs> new day, new way of doing this. Uh, I think this servo is just way too difficult to work with. And the fact that it binds and does all these dumb things makes it pretty useless to me. So, enter Linear Actuator from Amazon. This thing's great. So, also I had a fair bit of user error the other day working with the computer code and not getting it to upload to the Arduino. Now everything is cherry and check this out. All right, and that's almost about the right amount of travel. It's a little more travel than we need, but it is pretty dang close. The veins on the turbo are still pretty sticky. So let me show you. And for the time being, so this little plastic head here comes off, which is sweet. I'm gonna take this to the hardware store and find a bolt with the exact same thread. And then I'm just going to weld that bolt to one of these rod ends, which is perfectly sized for the turbo, and we'll have this as our motion. Then that only leaves me needing to mount this side somewhere at the right distance, which shouldn't be too hard. I think I'm gonna drill a hole right about here and use a long bolt and put a spacer on it, and that'll give us the correct pivot and everything in order to make this system work nicely. 
I'm super excited. Thank you so much for watching. This is the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel where we're putting a variable geometry turbo with my own Arduino and code on a Sprinter van turbo on my 1.6 liter turbo diesel. More videos coming soon. I appreciate you. Hope you have a good day out there.